You might only be 110 pounds soaking wet with waste in your pocket. But in the spirit, you're 10 feet tall. You're a monster. They could tell you anything. You say, no, no, the word says this. They could tell you anything. You could tell them like Jesus, man, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And God said, I'm healed. And God said, my marriage will work. And God said, my children will obey. But what you got to do is use your faith. Say, use your faith. Number six, we're going to get on out here. Is that all right? Number six. James 2 and 17. Write it down, write it down. It says, even so faith, if it hath not works, it is dead being alone. Say, faith without works is dead. Here it is, number six. My actions must correspond with my confession of faith. So what, basically what I'm saying is what you say got to match up with what you believe. What you do has to match. So that means if you're trusting God to, to work out your financial situation, you can't go around borrowing money from everybody trying to fix it. If you trust in God to work out your health, you can't be running around telling everybody how bad you feel. If you trust in God to work out your marriage, you can't be telling all the bros how, how you ain't got to take this no more from your wife. If you trust in God, you can't be standing over next to people with that sad face. You know how you do when you want some sympathy. So they can say, what's wrong, bro? You know, I just need $100. <laughs> you know how they do? You know how they look real sad when they want to borrow something from you? Y'all trying to act, act proud. Look straight ahead because if, if that's you, nobody will know. Nobody, nobody know. Look straight, look straight ahead. Say amen. Matter of fact, say amen. And, and they'll thank people borrowing from you. But your, your, your actions must correspond with your confession of faith. So that means if I'm healed, you know, I can't wear my sick clothes. That, that, that means that mean I got I to gotta put on some makeup tomorrow. I might be 100 pounds down. I might be sick and look like I'm falling apart, but, but, but the Lord said I'm healed, so I'm going to walk like I'm healed. I'm going to talk like I'm healed. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get a picture of myself when I look my best and, and put it on my mirror in place of the mirror, and I'm going to stand there and say, you look good today. And before you know it, I'm going to match the picture. So your actions must, cor faith without corresponding action is dead being alone. You got to give God something to work with. Tell your neighbor, you got to give God something to work with. So say my actions must line up with my faith. And I'm going to close with this. There was a woman in the Bible. The Bible says she was sick for 12 years. Say 12 years. Say it again. Say 12 years. Some of y'all been sick for 12 days and gave up on God. Some of y'all been broke for 10 minutes. Some of you just lost your job and you already gave up on God. How many of y'all know it's not, it's not the job that takes care of you anyway? I feel, I feel the Spirit telling me to tell you, compel you, that your job is not your source. But before you had that job, you still ate. And after you have that job, you'll still eat. And before you had that job, you had something to put on. And after you have that job, you'll still have something to put on. The Bible says, if God so clothed the lilies of the field, which today are, that means, that means if he made a flower look pretty, which today is, and tomorrow we'll be cast in the oven, somebody going to make bread out of it anyway. How much more will he do for you, oh, you of little faith? Say little faith. Listen, don't be sad if you got little faith, because you're going to build it, you're going to work on it, you're going to have big faith, you're going to have strong faith. One day you're going to have perfect faith, but you got to work on it. Is that all right? But the woman in the Bible, she was sick for 12 years. Say 12 years. It's a very sad story. It starts off sad. It said, and she went to every physician. She went to all the doctors. Say all the doctors. It says she spent everything she had. Say everything. Which wouldn't be that bad if she was better. Because, you know, if you're sick, you, you'll throw away all your money to try to get better. Am I right? You know, if your marriage ain't working, you'll try anything to get it right. Am I right? If your kids cut not strung, strung out on crack, you'll do anything to get them back. Is that all right? You know, you know the Lord just reminded me. He said, I did everything for y'all. He said, he said, I gave my best when you weren't worth it. He said, I went to the cross when you were still dropping it like it was hot. Listen, he said, I, he said, I went to the cross when you woke up with such, such and such wife, not your wife. But she gave up all she had, everything she had. And the Bible says she wasn't better. As a matter of fact, she grew worse. 
You know, sometimes it seems like you tried everything you can try and it seems like it's getting worse. Oh, Lord. But the Bible says something so clear. It, was, it said, then she heard about Jesus. Listen, that's why you're here today, to hear about Jesus. Listen, I can tell you anything I want to tell you, but if I don't point you to Jesus, I just had a show. It says, then she heard about Jesus. She heard it. Say, hear it. Hear it. No, no, no. Say it like you mean it. Say, hear it. Hear it. It says, she heard about Jesus. Then she said, then say, say it. Say it. She said, if I can but touch, if I can just touch his clothes, I'm going to be made whole. You got to change what you're hearing. Because if you change what you're hearing, you'll change what you say. Then you know what she said? She said, okay, I can just touch his clothes. I, you know, she, she had to be weak. She, she was bleeding for 12 years nonstop. She was hurting for 12 years nonstop. Some of y'all been abused for 15 years nonstop. But all you got to do is get one word about Jesus. And so you got to hear it. Say, hear it. Hear it. Say, it. say it. Third step, most important step. Say, do it. Come on, stand up, deacons. Oh, y'all stand up, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Y'all stand right here. Come on, you stand up with me, brother. You, you, you be my example. You my, you my Jesus today. You Jesus. Come on, y'all get in the way. Y'all stand in front of Jesus. Y'all stand in front. Of, it's all right, it's all right. You Jesus today. It say, and, and, and she said, if I could just touch his clothes. And they was in the way, but, but she was trying to touch his clothes. She said, if I could just hit the Jesus. Y'all give our brothers a hand. Y'all sit on down. Listen. She touched his clothes, and the Bible says immediately the flow of blood stopped. If you can just get to Jesus, immediately you'll stop hurting. If you can just get to Jesus, immediately you'll stop bleeding. If you can just get to Jesus, immediately that thing will turn around. In fact, if you touch Jesus, he'll touch you right back. Because Jesus was walking through the crowd, they was all over Jesus, and she touched his clothes. And he turned to his disciples, he said, boys. Somebody touched me. And they said, Jesus, you, you crazy. Everybody touched you. No, no, no. But he said, somebody, somebody in faith, somebody, somebody heard it, said it, and did it. Mm -hmm. I doubt somebody in this room, all you got to do is hear it, say it, and do it. She touched him. He turned around. He said, he said and she was kind of scared because, you know, she, she immediately felt the fact that it was better. Listen, I, I got I got. I got I to get this. I got to get this. I, gotta, I don't like to give other people testimony. But one of the brothers said that he changed what he was doing, and he began to listen to the word every day. Him, him and his spouse began to listen to the word all day long, just play the Bible, play this, play that, just only play the word. And, you know, he said it's hard to argue when the word of God is playing. <laughs> so when they touched Jesus, immediately the arguing stopped. When she touched Jesus, immediately the flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, he said, woman, you don't have to be afraid. He said, it was you, wasn't it? He said, what happened? She told him everything. She said, for 12 years, I've been to every doctor, every dime I had. I've been to every marriage counselor there is. I've been, I've been to every counselor trying to get me out of this homosexuality for a long time. I would had hand laid on me. I would had people speak over me. But when I heard about you, he said, he said, when I, when I, when I heard about you, I told you faith comes every time you hear the word of God proclaimed. She said, when I heard about you, I said, if I can just get to Jesus. Say it with me. Say, if I can just get to Jesus, everything will be all right. Say it again. Say, if I can just get to Jesus, everything will be all right. But you know the funny thing? Jesus touched her back. He said, woman, now I know I'm powerful, but it really wasn't me. He said, your faith made you whole. He turned back to her. I'm telling you, he turned back and touched her. He said, he said, you did something. He said, your faith made you whole. He said, now go in peace. And she wasn't sick no more. How many of y'all know if, you've been, if your marriage has been bad for 15 years and then it all of a sudden get better in one day, you got to run around and tell, tell everybody. One more story as I close. Woo, Jesus. Jesus went to a well. He said, I much needs, needs go this way. Uh -huh. And there was a woman at the well, and she had slept with everybody. As a matter of fact, she was still sleeping with folk right then. 
And Jesus said, woman, give me a drink. She said, well, you know, you, you're Israeli, you know, you, you're Israelite, we're not supposed to have no dealings. He said, but if you ask me for a drink, you'll never thirst again. You won't have to come back over here. If you get to Jesus, you won't have to go back to his house no more. Listen, if you get to Jesus, you won't, you, you won't call her on the phone no more. And, and Jesus said, you know, he said, go get your husband. She said, she said no, you, um, I don't have a husband. He said, you're right, because you had five husbands, and you sleep with somebody else's husband right now. Jesus put on blast, y'all. You know, sometimes Jesus will put you on blast, but thank God he don't put you on blast on the TV. He just put you on blast between you and him. If you get to him, he'll put you on blast. But he'll put you on blast and clean you up. How many of y'all know she went from a hooker to an evangelist in five minutes? So listen, it's not too late for you. Listen, his 12 disciples was in town buying bread and trying to buy food and all that. And they came back to see Jesus. She went back to town. She went back to town, y'all. And she went back to town and told everybody. Listen, I just met a man. Listen, they, they probably was like, yeah, you, you done met plenty of men. No, she said, no, 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 not like no other man. This man told me everything I ever did. This man is the king of kings. This man is the lord of lords. I'll never, ever, 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 ever be the same again. And y'all know she brought the whole town back and won them to Jesus. And 12 preachers had just left town and hadn't told nobody about Jesus. So that means right where you are, Jesus will meet you this morning. But all you got to do is hear it. Say, hear it. Hear it. Say it. Say it. And do it. Come on, stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise.